Let's start with this table I am developing for my English class as a rubric. There is actually a practical reason for developing a table in PowerPoint and not in Microsoft Word that I'll show you at the end of this tutorial. First, let's create a table with five rows and five columns. I will go to the Insert Table command in the Insert tab. Then I will float my mouse over the table grid five squares to the right, which will represent my columns, and five squares down, which will represent my rows. To enter data into the cells, I can use the navigational arrows on my keyboard or use the tab command. Right now I am entering data into a cell and will press down to move to the next cell. Then enter more text as I go along. Let's get forward to the whole table being filled in with my text. Notice that my text is smaller than it was before. If you want to change the text size in a table to fit on the page, you can change the text size just like you would in a content placeholder by selecting your text and changing the size in the Home tab in the font group. To move the table, you can move your mouse to an outside border of the table, wait until the mouse pointer turns into a four-way handle, then click and drag the table wherever you need it to be on the slide. To resize the entire table, you can click, hold, and move the, the corners in to make the table smaller. You can also choose to resize individual columns and rows. To do this, go to the Format Tables Layout tab. Then in the Cell Size group, increase the height of the row from 1 inch to 2 inches. If I wanted to make the rows an equal size, instead of having only the height of my selected row bigger, I could press distribu Distribute Rows to do that. Be careful not to confuse cell size with table size. Let's make the table bigger as a whole. You would do that in the table size group. Let's change the height of the table to 7 inches and the width to 12 inches. I have to add a row at the bottom to enter more information. The way to add a row would be to click any cell in the bottom row of the table, then click on the Format Table Layout tab. In the Rows and Column group, click Insert Below. This will insert a row below our insertion point. You can also delete columns and, and rows. On second thought, maybe I don't need that last row and I want to get rid of it. To do this, I will highlight the row that I don't need. Then click on the Format Table Layout tab. In the Rows and Columns group, click the Delete drop arrow and click Row. This will delete our extra row. Now I need to add a title in the first row. To do this, I will have to merge the columns to make it one. I can do this by selecting the first row and then click on the Table Tools Layout tab, then click the Merge icon in the Merge group. Now my first row has merged the columns and I can enter my title, Persuasive, persuasive Essay Rubric. I can also split the cells in the table, which would be the opposite of merging them. Splitting allows you to split cells into more rows or columns. In this example, I want to add a picture depicting the four levels of assessment. I will need to split the first row to do this. First I will need to highlight the row that I want to split. Then I will click the split cells icon in the table tools layout tab. I will choose to split the row into one column and two rows by entering this information in the split cells dialog box. I will repeat these steps again so that I can split the empty row into five columns by choosing the five columns and one row in the split cells dialog box. Now I might like to change the look of my table. We've already made some changes with the table tools layout tab and now we can make changes to the design of the table by clicking on the table tools design tab. In the table style styles gallery, you can choose from a variety of table styles of your choosing. PowerPoint will provide you with a table style that fits the theme of your presentation, so you may not have to alter the color if you are happy with it. I'll keep this one the same. There are similar design options to that of designing a text box that we covered in our last unit, such as shading, borders, and effects. However, there's a special fill option that I'd like to show you. First, I will click inside of the cell where I want to add a picture then go to the shading drop arrow. Click picture and another dialog box will open. I will choose a picture from the online picture option and add it to the cell. Uh, just a side note, using the online picture search in PowerPoint is safe because it will only search for copyright free pictures 
and images uh, that provide a source from where the picture came from, which means you won't get in trouble for using them as long as you are only using them inside of PowerPoint. You can't say the same thing about pictures from Google Search. I'll choose the cat looking disappointed as my picture for this cell. The nice thing about this is that if I make the columns or rows around the picture bigger, the picture will change with it. We have used a picture as a fill color for that cell. This is something you can't do in Microsoft Word with tables. I will continue this step to complete our table. That is it for inserting and formatting tables on a slide in PowerPoint.